Okay, we are recording. Good evening. Welcome to the Great Oak High School Community Advisory Partnership, CAP. My name is Julianne Dickinson. I am the Intervention Support Specialist at Great Oak High School. Um, maybe would the other members like to introduce themselves? Mrs. Juan Carbajal, Attendance Intervention, um, a Spanish translator. Nicole Bolt, LCAP counselor. Andrew Baca, LCAP counselor. Uh, Amber Lane, assistant principal. Tim LaCour, assistant principal. Keith Moore, assistant principal. Ann Perrin. And Ms. Stricken. I'm typing, I was typing all the people in. Amy Rickin, principal and parent. Okay, so first we're gonna review our meeting norms. Um, so if you could please sign into the chat. And when you sign into the chat, um, put your first and last name and enter your role in tonight's meeting. Um, when you are speaking, please introduce yourself and, and your role so we know who you are and we can record that into our meeting minutes. Um, please make sure that you are muted upon entry and that you stay muted unless you are speaking. If you have any questions, please type it into the chat. If you specifically have any questions about returning to campus in the next couple of weeks, please use that link that is included on our presentation um, to ask those questions there. Tonight we will be get, um, just sticking to our agenda this evening. And that's the next norm, which is please adhere to our agenda. And um, we're looking for solutions-based responses and comments. So we appreciate those. Thank you. Tonight's agenda is to overview the actions and services, um, an LCAP overview, and then review the actions and services, um, try to collect some community feedback and talk about our greatest needs. Sorry, there we go. Okay, Mrs. Ricken, I think you're up. I actually stole some from you, sorry. That's fine, I, I can do this one uh, really fast. So basically what is LCAP? Um, the Local Control Accountability Plan, these are supplemental funds generated for each district based off of their um, student population that meet specific demographics. So we're looking specifically at EL, foster youth, socioeconomically disadvantaged, and these LCFF funds um, need to be voted on by stakeholders and approved by our governing board. And so what we're going to do here tonight is um, look at what the projected use of those funds is and provide a little feedback on behalf of Great Oak High School. I think we can go to the next slide. Amber, are you doing this one or you want me to? These are the districts. Oh, I can do it. Sorry, I was typing at the same time. No, I Perhaps. saw that. Happens when you try to do both. Um, really, when we look at our LCAP, we have three goals. Um, the first one is to refine, and we're looking at uh, refining our instruction program and learning opportunities for students to ensure that we're meeting all of the students within uh, our TVUSD community. Uh, from there, we look to respond. We know that we have a diverse student population who requires different supports for their varying needs. And so we want to ensure that we have a system of support that will meet all of those needs. And the last one is to reach out. Um, we are a community-based organization and we want to ensure um, that we are reaching out and serving our families and our broader community. And so those are our three LCAP goals. And the next slide, this really just provides you this graphic, provides an overview of um, our LCAP actions and services. And so I'm just going to go column by column so we have an understanding of what each column asks us for. Um, the first, well, really at the top, it starts with a goal. And then we look at how we can meet that goal through actions and services. So on this particular example, our goal is that TBUSD students will have increased access to multi-tiered systems of support. And so 
we've identified our PBIS OCR teachers that are on special assignment and our tier two behavior assistants um, at the K-5 level. So that's that first column. Um, from there, it talks about the metric. How did TVUSD and its stakeholders determine that that um, action or service was necessary? The green really looks at the data that was pulled from that metric. And then the fourth column over is the really the narrative explanation about why um, that action or service is needed. And then the last one is the proposal for this current year. So um, in this case, for our, at the high school level, we are looking to continue the use of our PBIS teachers on special assignment um, as they look to help us mitigate learning loss and support the social and emotional needs of our students. And so there are targeted actions and services that are at um, elementary, middle, and high school. Some of them do overlap between all levels. And then there are some action services that are specifically for um, the district as a whole. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Dickinson and she's going to talk about um, all of the proposed actions and services that we will need to prioritize and give our feedback on. Thank you. Um, so in goal one, in the refined instructional practices, um, you can see the K to five and the six through eight offerings that the district has provided. But tonight we're gonna focus on the nine through 12, which affects Great Oak High School the most. The first one is AVID um, Advancement via Individual Determination. This is a um, program that supports students who are, um, uh, have the potential to go to college but need a little support system to go there. Historically, AVID has been for students who are from low income families and who are from a demographic that is underrepresented at the university level. The goal of AVID is to increase those demographics at the university level and the goal of AVID is to not just get students to college but help them in the, the habits and procedures that are necessary in order to persist through the graduation of, um, from a university. The next one is Career Tech Ed. Um, this is a full-time equivalency, basically uh, boils down to section offerings at the at Great Oak High School, uh, of which we have a pretty robust CTE program. Um, then there are math specialists, we have one. Um, there's administrative support, district professional development days, technology materials and supplies. And these are all things that are pretty applied pretty evenly through uh, across the district. Um, in order to support the rest of the plan. For goal two, uh, goal two is to respond to the diverse needs of students. And so again, we're gonna focus just on the nine through 12. Um, here, they have allocated money for credit recovery for students who have failed a course and need to make it up in order to meet the high school graduation requirements. There's a bus route offered, but that is to TVHS. Um, they did that based on some findings that the population that is served under the LCAP was not making it to school. And by providing that bus, they increased it by like 97% or something to that effect. So it's money well spent. Three intervention support specialists. That's actually my role. I'm an intervention support specialist for Great Oak High School and we support the system of intervention at the high schools. Um, there's PBIS uh, teachers on special assignment, which uh, Dr. Lane referenced. This is our positive behavior intervention or OCR teacher. Um, we have one of them at our high school. Um, there's counseling specialists, and we have two of them with us today. Mrs. Baca and Ms. Bolt are both LCAP counseling specialists. We have one licensed clinical social worker um, on our campus. The reduced lunch program, this is money that funds any student who qualified for reduced, not free lunch, but reduced lunch. Um, what this funding does is it helps fill the gap between reduced and free, and therefore every student who qualified for free or reduced is actually getting a free, free meal service. We determined through data a couple of years ago that students who were on the reduced lunch program were not actually picking up their lunches, but once we made it free, they were picking up their lunches and starting to eat. So that's a positive thing. There's a library homework center. This is actually hosted at the Temecula Public Library. And um, I believe the number is somewhere in the ballpark of 60 kids per week were being served prior to the pandemic through that system. Um, and then 
The UDP site allocation, that's also known as site discretionary funds. And this is where um, in our first CAP meeting, we talked about what our specific site needs are and what how we needed to spend that funding to best support our students. Um, and then the last one is the homeless and foster youth support. And so I think that is in the version of both um, our LCAP counselor, but as well as some district office personnel who really focus solely on the homeless students and the foster youth students and the resources that we can get gathered for them. Uh, for goal three, uh, goal three, this is applied throughout the district, so you won't see the grade level breakdown anymore on this one. And this is to, in order to reach out to families and community members, the district supports bilingual clerks at the district office. There are translators and um, K-12 Insight is actually our Let's Talk app and it, um, it does our, our surveys most of the time uh, when we survey our parents and community, the K-12 Insight um, company helps us manage that and, uh, and aggregate the data for us. Um, so at this point, um, really, it's kind of open to for discussion on what um, what it is that we see are supportive of our goals, uh, not supportive of our goals, supportive of the students that this the, this funding is supposed to serve. Um, and I put this quote up here, the strength of the pack is the wolf and the strength of the wolf is the pack because it's, you know, what we decide to do is just gonna strengthen our individual students and then strengthen our school together. Oops. Does anybody have any comments about what should be made? Do you want me to go back to any goals? Looking at the feedback form, um, the feedback form, if you could go back, perfect, to goal number one. Um, mm -hmm. The feedback form asks us to look at um, the actions and services proposed in goal number one, and it asks this group two questions. Do we have anything to add or so, um, yeah, do we have anything else we'd like to add or no? Um, we have, it says, yes, we have nothing more to add or no, we have some more suggestions for actions and services that are no longer there. So looking at goal one, how does this group feel as far as um, meeting, refining instructional practices and learning opportunities for students? Do we have suggestions or no suggestions? I don't have any suggestions for this one. Um, I'm thankful that we did hear back that all of- it. Julian. What's that? I already started it or whoever's typing oh. right now. I already started it, so we're good. If you just want to chat, oh, sorry. Um, I just I think I'm glad I'm thankful that under technology materials and supplies, all of the site licenses that the district purchased this year uh, that are posted on Canvas are all going to roll over for another year. So that's yeah. good. I agree. Um, if that was not the case, then I probably would have some feedback in that regard. All right, so if there's no other suggestions, I'm gonna hit that we have nothing more to add and go to the next one. I think I think from a standpoint of, you know, intervention specialist and working some of, with some of our most at-risk students, I think that um, the idea of the district professional development days, just specifically coming from the supplementary funds, I think it would be maybe more appropriate if that was directly um, addressing some of those student needs. Um, what that tends to be is more broad scoping this year. It was very much about the, you know, the online learning platforms, which is absolutely necessary in the district, but coming out of this funding source, it would be really helpful if we did professional development that was working more with at-risk students, how to build relationships with students in order to get them to progress more in the classroom, get them to attend classes better, you know, with more frequency. I see that there are issues surrounding some of our at-risk students that really aren't ever addressed in these professional development days because it is more of a broad um, you know, school-wide, district-wide need, which not to say that that's not needed or shouldn't be present in our organization at all, but just to have those professional development days, that money allocated maybe specifically to the needs of at-risk students. Okay. 
So, so far I have um, that no, we would just have to, we would like to, it made me say that we had some suggestions for actions and services. So I've said that we don't have, we are not asking for any additional actions and services, but we do feel that the professional development that is aligned with this goal should be uh, strategically used to meet the needs of our at Promise students. And then I just started to type some of the things that you said. So making relationships with students, strategies to create, you didn't say this part, strategies to create independent learners, I put that, um, for culturally responsive teaching. Um, and then I missed some of the other things you said, so I was gonna ask you to repeat yourself if you can remember. Um, I guess, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll develop instead of repeat, I don't know. I think attendance is a big issue with at-risk students. So somewhere in the realm of, you know, outreach in attendance or, you know, or I think I said building relationships on how to get kids to actually come and stay, continue to attend your classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, I think social emotional, I didn't mention before, but that's another large issue we're seeing among at-risk students to just uh, do some professional development around how can teachers balance that social emotional piece in the classroom with everything else that they're doing, or perhaps just reallocating some of professional development money to personnel who can help address that. So whether that means more hours or more people to address attendance or social emotional learning needs, that either one of those would be a great uh, opportunity for the students who are in need. Okay. I think we can go to the second one. Okay. It's the same question for the second one. I'm just going to finish up typing for this one while you guys start to talk. So I'm going to come over here just so I can read the question again. It is, yes, we have nothing more to add or no, we have some suggestions. So they're saying, do you feel the actions and services proposed are sufficient in, this is goal one, refining, I'm going to hit yes, just so I can hit next. The question is, do you feel the actions and services proposed are sufficient in reaching the district's goal to respond to the diverse needs of students with systems of support? Yes or no, and then suggestions. I, for me personally in this one, um, I feel like when we look at, um, when we listened to the board workshop related to LCAP and they talked about the um, addition of social workers on the middle school campuses while I felt at all middle school campuses, while I felt that was a, um, a much needed step at that level. Um, when you look at what our counselors or social workers, I think it, really we could add both at this level um, that, you know, our, our social worker is asked to service 3,200 students. Um, with one of her, where a middle school social worker is asked to service maybe 1,200 students. So there wasn't really a, an equitable um, allocation in that area. Uh, I would also say looking at our counselors and the, 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 the lengths that they've gone to this year um, to help our students who are struggling in this distance learning environment or online learning environment, um, I'd like to see more support in that particular area. So more counseling support and more social work support. I think coming back to a um, brick and mortar campus and our in returning to our actual instruction on campus, um, we're going to need to support our students um, in that way, and we need more people to help us do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hands down, I agree totally, <laughs> and I think there's an opening with the board to even make this claim and take it back. So I don't think this is meaningless feedback. I think it's really important to say that we also agree with two of the board members who suggested if we're going to also add one at every middle school, maybe we need more than one at the high school. So that was a board comment. Um, and then I just think on the counseling end, you know, and aligning with this ASCA model, if you look at the caseload size in that model, it does not match or reflect what our high school our comprehensive high school counselors caseload looks like. And I think it's really important that if that's the direction the district is going, they wanna be an ASCA counseling model um, within TVUSD, then we need smaller caseloads in counseling so our counselors can actually do the work that they're being asked to do. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would also like to just add a little bit to the social worker conversation in the sense that 
Um, for the most part, my understanding is um, when a student gets on the social worker's caseload, she sees them approximately once a week for an hour, or sometimes they'll go every other week. But if you just kind of think about if she sees everybody once a week for one hour, she can only see 35 students because that's the max amount of hours that are actually in her contract. And she's asked to do a, a, a number of other duties besides just see students. And so what that does is that reduces that number of 35 to 30 or 25 or 20, depending on what, how many other duties she's being asked to do or what the availability are, of our students for to see her. So actually adding social workers makes a lot of sense because when you kind of max them out at maybe 35 kids, if they see them every other week, then you're talking about only 70 kids on a campus of 3000. It seems very small considering the large issue this is in the district and then in the nation. For sure. And yeah, I think we're all on the same page with that. But I remember when we had Misty Walker, who was specifically a social worker working with our special education group, you know, so we almost had a social worker assigned to that population on our campus. And then to have two more social workers who could work with the remaining population or crossover and support SPED. I don't know if this is also a place where, you know, we make a request to bring back the, the dean of, you know, special education position, but we're going to be in some significant need uh, when we get students and staff back on this campus. And when we look at the last 11, 12 months now of students who have needed accommodation and support and have not received all of their services as a result of online learning, where we're going to see most of that need to accelerate and recover is going to be in that area. And I feel like we are sorely lacking in resources um, at the high school level to be able to do that successfully. I have to chime in just because I have to. You guys have said it all. The one thing that I would just kind of put a put a bow on it is um, the the 250 per one counselor should be the target if we want to be a model um, counseling department. And we are um, that times three right now um, when you take out our LCAP counselors in that mix. Obviously, we're very strategic on that and uh, having them. But what we're, what we're seeing now is take the LCAP caseload because um, those kids are in crisis. It's doubled at least as far as kids in crisis and now those kids are sitting across four grade levels on our general counselors caseloads so there's lots to be you know there's lots of support to be had here and we're again we're coming off the heels of um really a social emotional crisis and we got to get kids back healthy so they can um access curriculum and learning um and i will say for the social worker piece Right now, um, her cap is 20, and that 20 is because there are meetings. Um, she also responds to crisis um, response teams, so when we're on campus. So when we talk about another social worker, um, I would advocate for um, maybe one being at the front lines of the early screening on potential 5150s um, that often can absolutely take over a complete day of a counselor who now is serving 720 um, students. And that, that, that day might um, turn into one student for the entire day times how many days in a year times how many crises. Yeah, all right, I got it all. Would you like me to read it back or do you trust me? We trust, trust you. you. We trust you. Okay. All right. So next asks us to consider goal three, which is our reach out to family and community members. And same question. Uh, do you feel that the actions and services proposed are sufficient in reaching the district's goal to reach out to families and community members? Yes, we have nothing more to add or no. We have some suggestions for actions and services that are not currently in the plan. I'm going to say no. And my suggestion is that they hire uh, a translation service and allocate money to the translation service so we can speak to as many of our families as we possibly humanly can. 
because currently we are not provided translators other than Chinese and Spanish. Um, and so it leaves a huge number because we have many more diverse languages than those two um, of kids that we cannot communicate. And um, the, I think it's, is it Thai, Nicole, that is our most recent one. We cannot communicate with our Thai families and we have two really significantly at risk Thai students and we cannot seem to get any movement on getting translation. And so, you know, they're, they're pushing the cost to the site, but this is a great resource that this, this supplemental funding can actually support and they can support it district wide where mm -hmm. we just go to a service. Um, we had historically as a district just been relying on um, other personnel who, who can translate, you know, who have full-time jobs. And what happened is they tapped that person out in the district and they cannot take translating jobs anymore because they're just trying to manage their own classroom at this point. So um, having a service that would cover all languages, you know, or as many as we possibly can, I'm sure we can't quite get to all, all, but more than Chinese and Spanish that is hosted by the district would be wonderful. Did you get all that, Dr. Lane? I did. I got it. I didn't have anything else to add. Anybody else? Okay. And that is it. We have submitted. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you. If you have any questions, you can go to Let's Talk or you can go to our website. <laughs> you can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Thank Bye. you for joining this evening's Great Oak High School camp. Excellent. I think we're good with the recording. We can stop that. If I knew how. <laughs>